<laughs> Welcome to vlog number three. What you doing again? I've caught <laughs> Leia off guard. The first take was no good because Leia looked not her best. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy what's about to unfold. There's a big announcement coming tomorrow. So stay tuned, like and subscribe and enjoy. Week nine, maybe everyone was in the same boat as me this week. I felt shit house on Monday, and I don't know if it's because the weather forecast for the week was horrendous, but I knew that I had to Everest on Tuesday. And so the thought of doing two and a half thousand meters on a short climb on Monday, followed by an Everesting on Tuesday, played with my mind a little bit, but I got the job done, did climb club on Monday and decided to Everest on the backside of Els Angels on Tuesday. I actually couldn't sleep on Monday night. I don't know if it was Everesting nerves or what it was, but I was awake at 3.30 in the morning. I couldn't get back to sleep, so I decided to have some brekkie, drive around to the backside of Els and I actually commenced my Everesting at 5.30 a.m. in the dark. Tuesday 1st of March. I'm on the backside of Els Angels and I'm trying to sneak in an Everest. Everest number nine before the rain hits us later in the week. I'm tired, it is cold. I'm questioning why I'm doing this, but the stars are out. So let's see how we go. Everest number nine at backside of Els Angels. It was a little bit miserable and I didn't really feel like being on my bike, but the sunrise was sick. Super nice to watch the sunrise over the ocean in La Scala. Great way to start the day. And I guess something I miss not being in Australia, here we ride so much later in the day that we don't often see the sunrise. That being said, I got 28 repeats done. I was done before dark. Everest number nine, that is a wrap. The first finish in the light. 28 repeats, 9,000 meters, 11 hours, 30 something minutes. Time to go home. Felt good rolling home and having an early shower and my weekly dose of McDonald's. Calories are king because if you don't put fuel in the engine, you're not going to perform the next day. Speaking of, the next day I drove out to Matadeu with my creative team for the year, Nick Howe, his partner Nicole, and the film fellow Alex. You guys are going to see what we filmed very, very soon. I did two ascents. We then came home and spent some time at the house filming some more goodies. Again, you guys are going to see that soon. It was a good day. It was nice to break up the routine, do something different, get that climbing done, and then knowing that I only had a couple of, uh, I guess, medium days to complete. One thing that's been on my mind this week is, I guess, what's going on in the Ukraine. I have some, not direct family, but some family over there and scary to see the state of the world and i guess what i'm trying to say is that i feel very privileged to be able to ride my bike in a time like this it's certainly on my mind that it is something not to be taken for granted thoughts and prayers are with those people and very shortly you guys are going to find out how an event i'm undertaking this year is going to hopefully benefit the people that are struggling in ukraine anyway Following the day at Matadeu, we went to Rokokorba. Instead of doing two and a half thousand meters, I decided I wanted to get a 3,000 meter day done. So we did three ascents of Rokokorba. My mate Sam joined me, Harrison joined for a little bit. We got the job done, we got home, and it felt good to know that that 3,000 meter day was finished. I arrived home to a package from Specialized, and I have some new shoes. Let me know what you guys think of the color in the comments below. Super bright. I am a fan. I just have to carefully choose what I wear around the shoes to make sure I'm not clashing. <laughs> but no, I love the red. I asked for the red and I love the airy shoes. So thumbs up from, uh, from me. Friday, I actually did something completely different. Not a hill repeat in sight. My mate Harrison decided to plan a route out to the coast. That was basically an out and back. 1,250 meters out. 1250 meters back, four and a half hour ride. Great spin, great for the mind, great to break up the monotony of climbing the same hill 
time and time again. Yeah, got home on Friday and felt as though I'd earned a, uh, a day off on Saturday. So Saturday was a day off, had a really cruisy weekend, a little bit of bike, a whole lot of food. I guess the highlight of the weekend was having a little birthday dinner with Sam and Leia at uh, Bobia, a little Japanese restaurant in La Bisbal. Highly recommend it, but anyway, I am looking forward to kicking off another week. Monday is almost upon us, and so I'm looking forward to getting stuck back into that routine. Adios for now. I hope you guys have enjoyed. What is up? It is the end of week 10. It has been the start of the launch. We have a we have lift off coming, coming very, very soon. soon. I'm excited and keen to, see, to what see what you guys think. think. But first, let's kick off back on Monday. I installed a new Super Sapiens device Monday morning before Climb Club, and my glucose readings are now spot on. Sensors last for two weeks, game changing. Fun club was great. We had a great crew there, lots of good banter. Really enjoyed Monday, I always enjoy Mondays. Anyone that's in Girona, come on down and join us for a Monday climb club. I got home, I actually jumped in the bath, watched a bit of bike racing in the bath, and like an old man, I fell asleep and woke up 20 minutes later in cold water. One of the things I'm realizing is just how important it is to stay fueled and I am hammering food at the moment. It's almost like anything that goes in doesn't really touch the sides and I just need more and more and more. Uh, lots of fresh fish, lots of eggs, good protein, lots of carbohydrates, just trying to stay full is super important. What else happened this week? I did the Girona Miami loop with a couple of mates, Tristan, Diedrich and Harrison. We rode down to Placha Diaro. We're calling it the uh, Girona Miami loop because the palm trees down there remind us all of Miami. I'm getting sick of hill repeats and so to be able to ride out there and ride back without having to actually climb any of the same climbs more than once is a super welcome change. I replaced some brake pads. I got home from that ride and realized I needed new pads. And I actually worked out that I was going to Everest the following day because the weather on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday looked horrendous. So made sure the new pads were on because I was going to Everest a climb Mass Now, otherwise known as the Mass Now Wall. Insane climb. 1.4 kilometers in length, 14% average gradient. I think the max gradient ramps up at 22%. 205 meters of elevation gain per ascent. 43 ascents are required for an Everest. I set the alarm early, 3.30 a.m., got up, drove 45 minutes down to the coast and got kitted up. We are here in the dark again at the base of the Masnau climb in Placha Diaro. It's 5.45 a.m. This is probably one of the steepest climbs in the region. Let's get this show on the road. Everest number 10. Decided I was going to break the day up into 10 repeat blocks so that I had basically four quarters to get through. First quarter, as good as it can be climbing up gradients that steep at my weight. Got through it and noticed that there were some grey clouds coming in from the south. Just started raining. And this is probably the least ideal hill in Catalonia. For it to rain on. I then spent the next six hours riding in the rain and it was horrendous. My brand new set of brake pads completely toast. Got to about 20 repeats in and I was literally braking on, I would almost say metal on metal. It was really, really sketchy and it made the descents really, really slow. To make matters worse, on my 32nd repeat, I snapped my chain and I thought, you know, I'm gonna have to go to a bike shop now. I'm gonna have to replace this thing. I'm stuffed. I'm gonna lose so much time. Anyway, I got back to the car and realized that I had a BBB chain link, although it was for an 11 speed chain. Well, I put the chain link on the chain and it worked, but I could only use one gear. Luckily for this climb, I only really needed one gear. And so I popped it right up the top of the, the ring and the granny gear and basically spun away for the next 12 odd repeats. Got the job done, nine hours, 20 minutes, 118 kilometers, my fastest Everest to date. Really happy with it. Really stoked that I actually pushed through despite the shitty conditions and the setbacks, I got it done.
that drive home was pretty rewarding knowing that, you know, Everest for the week was done. Although the weather was looking shitty for the rest of the week, I was sort of, you know, I don't mind getting out for two, three, four hours in the rain, but nine hours, 10 hours is not so fun. Friday, very easy, thousand meters up the front side of Ells and two up the back side. And then actually went to a local restaurant horse category to celebrate, celebrate a mate Declan's birthday. So happy birthday, Declan. Saturday was spent on the couch because the rain was super heavy. Sunday was then an easy 1500 meters with Tristan. This coming week, the weather looks shite. Rain every single day. I don't know what day I'm gonna Everest. I need to analyze the situation and see what the weatherman does in terms of updating things. I hope it gets better, fingers crossed. For now, I am going to chill. I need to drink my Coke Zero and I'm gonna eat my rice crackers. I will chat to you guys next week. The theme of the week has been rain. Lots and lots and lots of rain. The locals tell me this is the longest stretch of rain they've had now in 15 years. So that's saying something. Having said that, spring is just around the corner, which can only mean warm weather and sun awaits. This week's highlight was my good mate, Zach Williams from Perth coming to visit. Z-Dub Photography, Zach is a great looking rooster, a very talented photographer, and above all, he is one of the finest gentlemen that I know. Good evening, friends. This is my dear friend, Zachariah, from the land of Perth in Western Australia, the land down under. Welcome back to Jerome. It's lovely to be here and to have such a well-equipped and well-manicured guide to show me the way, the way of, of Spain and Catalonia. Zach arrived, well, he was scheduled to arrive on Tuesday morning. And so I got out early, got my 3,000 meters of repeats done on the backside of Ells, in the rain, in the fog, the things you do for mates that you love. I gave him a big hug when he arrived, so good to see him. We spent the next 12 hours just catching up on everything that's happened over the last two years. The following day, we got out for a Girona Miami loop down to Placha Diaro. I have to say, Zach's lost a lot of weight since I've last seen him. 35 kilos, I believe. And so riding with him nowadays, it's a, it's a pleasure. He's so much stronger than he was. And it's yeah, so good to see him on the bike, smashing goals and yeah, achieving things. So yeah, kudos to you, mate. On Thursday, it was just Zach and I, we got out for a nice little loop around Connect the Adri, both actually quite tired from the day before. Zach's not done this much climbing before. Thursday night, we had a, a nice dinner at home, super low key. And uh, unfortunately, I had to get up early Friday morning. So I gave Zach a big hug before going to bed and said bon voyage, given the 3.20 a.m. alarm this Friday, was wet and so i had to be really careful which climb i picked to everest everest 11 down at the base don't know what we're going to call this climb it's a skater north side here with sam pre-ride activations done up we go. I chose a climb around Saskeda Dam, 1.4 kilometers in length and 143 meters of elevation. I wanted to make sure I wasn't going too high in elevation this week, just because I'm worried that the higher you get, the colder you get. And the higher you go, the longer you generally have to descend. Saskeda was great. 64 repeats, an amazing view at the top of the climb, which made Rich in the top each time super enjoyable. We finished quite early. Sam did a couple of repeats with me um, throughout the day. Sam's been coming and helping helping me out with these Everest, which has been super helpful. Leia and I actually decided that on Friday night, we were gonna treat ourselves to Indian. We parked the McDonald's and went down to the Taj Indian restaurant in Girona. Good vibe, really good food. Following day, I actually just did a chill loop in the rain with a mate Diedrich and Sam. They climbed a thousand meters. So that's quite a typical recovery day for me now, a thousand meters. Well, I prefer to do that in the sun and not in the rain. On Sunday, we went out to a nice restaurant, Taverna El Sabira, a very typical Catalan restaurant in San Hilari, or very close to. We had a feast fit for 10 kings, I would say. So much food left, so full, so content. Just meant that the, the gravel road down from the restaurant back into Girona was uh, a little bit testing on the stomach, but we made it home safely. So 
all things considered, it was a good day out. The weather next week, again, looks like rain. I'm becoming quite accustomed to this rain and I'm just very thankful I have good Velocio clothing to keep me dry. Let's see what it brings. Tomorrow is the start of a new week and I'm looking forward to getting stuck in to another 19,600 meters of vert. See you guys soon. The theme of wet weather kicked off another week. Here at week 12, at the end of month three. Climb Club, pretty abysmal turnout this week, to be honest. A couple of wet weather warriors in Clayton and Sam. And I actually ended up spending Tuesday morning with my specialized air issues lodged in the air conditioning vent with the heater on full gas trying to dry them out before a little bit of sun on tuesday which was a welcome surprise and super nice to actually have some warmth on the back again while out riding this week i've actually covered a little bit more about what i'm eating during the week to give you guys a little bit of insight i eat a lot of calories i eat a lot of nutrients and it is key in performing day after day and ensuring that i don't get sick a lot of fish a lot of salad, a lot of carbohydrate, and a bit of fat to be honest. I love fish. We have a small pescetaria close by, a little fish market. Morning wise, it's always toast. We're actually really lucky. We've got a great little bakery nearby, La Punchual, which is quite famous here in Girona. The guy that runs this bakery, Juan, he often treats me with some sugary sweets after a ride, depending on how many kilometers or how much elevation I've ridden. So it's great to get in there and uh, load up on some calories. Mid-ride treats this week, courtesy of of Dolce Papica down at Clachidiaro, a bocadillo, which is an egg and cheese sandwich, cafe con leche, flat white for those in Australia. The only difficulty is the Mass Now Wall, which is the steep little golf course climb I did a couple of weeks ago. This is the first climb that follows after the uh, coffee shop, so the legs are normally suffering quite badly from cafe leg syndrome. So in addition to climbing a whole lot more this week, I have to add, mountains weren't the only thing I was climbing. On my Thursday 1500 meter loop with Harrison, I decided I wanted to get an extra two, two and a half meters of vert. And so I found a, I don't know what you'd call it, a tower. And I decided to climb the tower in my specialized Aries climbing shoes. Climbing this bad boy. I'm gonna take the Wahoo up to the top. Unfortunately, I climbed so slow that the Wahoo didn't pick it up. The Wahoo hasn't picked it up. Not happy. Because I've used makeup for it. But anyway, I felt better climbing the two and a half meters because I felt like I'd achieved something out of the ordinary. Friday it rolled around quickly as it does. And this week I decided to Everest on a small climb close to town in another town called Beskano. Very similar to last week's climb, 1.4 kilometers in length, 140 meters of elevation per ascent, which required me to complete 64 repeats of the climb. It was a nice climb. Although steep at the end, 15% it ramped up to. I um, got in a great rhythm. I had good company throughout the day. A couple of mates popped out. I finished at 5.30 p.m., which is super early compared to the other Everest, but that probably is attributed to the fact that I started super early at 5.30 a.m. Uh, that being said, I got home, didn't have McDonald's this week. I treated myself to two kebabs from local legends, Star Blue Kebab. They have a bit of a reputation in Girona for being Girona's best kebabs. And I can confirm the falafel kebab is top notch. Back on the topic of food this week, I, um, what did I do? I finished off the week nicely with some churros. We had Indian, we had vermouth this morning at a local cafe with a mate, Chavi and Leia. And then uh, Leia and I actually went to one of our favorite little Japanese restaurants out of town, La Bobilla, which is in a town called, called La Bisbal. Super nice Japanese, great setting, and we top things off with an alcohol-free gin and tonic. That brings us to the end of the week. Although there are big things coming tomorrow, I'll be Everesting, but there is something coming, so stay tuned. In addition to that, vlogs are gonna be becoming more regular rather than monthly, they're gonna be coming weekly. And so if there's any hot topics you guys would like me to cover, pop them down below, like and subscribe. Thanks again for tuning in, and I will see you guys out on the road.